Molecules that are not the same as their mirror images are chiral. And we've seen previously this sort of prototypical example of tetrahedral carbon linked to four different groups as kind of a classic example of a chiral compound or sort of a chiral template, right? Regardless of the nature of these four different groups, we're going to get a chiral compound if we've got four different groups attached to one te tetrahedral carbon like that. This, that, this is why this carbon is referred to as a chiral center or chirality center by some. In this video, we're going to learn how to determine whether a molecule with given molecular structure is chiral or not. And molecules lacking an enantiomer, symmetric molecules, that do not have two-handed versions are known as achiral. We'll learn how to determine whether a molecule is chiral or achiral using two different approaches, one of which is a bit faster than the other, but a bit more error-prone, and one that is a bit more foundational and a bit more reliable, shall we say, because it's closer to the definition of chirality, which is not being the same as one's mirror image. So let's dig into now these methods for determining whether a molecule is chiral or achiral. The method for determining chirality that is closest to the definition involves generating the mirror image by reflecting the molecular structure and comparing the structure thus generated to the original. If the mirror image is not the same as the original structure, you're looking at a chiral molecule. If the mirror image and the original structure are identical, the compound or the molecule is achiral. And so let's practice this sort of brute force method for determining chirality with these three examples here. And I call it brute force because you're essentially brute forcing your way through the mirror image and trying to align the mirror image and the original structure as, as best you can. It's a bit long-winded, as we'll see, but it's less error-prone in my experience than the alternative method, which involves looking for reflection symmetry in the molecule. More on that in a little bit. For now, let's focus on this diol that I've labeled 1 and determine whether this is chiral or achiral. So step 1 is to reflect the structure. And you're actually f completely free to choose absolutely any orientation of the so-called mirror to generate this reflection. It's entirely up to you. You could make it perpendicular to the screen like this, you could make it perpendicular to the screen like this. You could make it the plane of the screen itself. And that's what I'm going to do in this video, arguing that this keeps things relatively simple. When we choose the reflection plane to be the plane of the screen itself, what happens is an exchange of the groups above and below the plane of the screen. In this particular case, these H's are going to be reflected up and the OHs down. So the implied Hs and the OH groups will change places at these two carbons, which are in fact stereocenters. So after this reflection, we're going to generate this structure. And notice again, what's happened here is an exchange of the positions of the implied hydrogens here and here with the OH groups, hydroxyl groups linked to those same carbons. Now the question is, is this identical to the original? And to determine this, we're going to try to superimpose the structures one and one prime as best we can. And what jumps out to me is the, the issue here is the hydroxyl groups are back behind the screen in this structure, but they're in front of the screen in this structure. So we're going to need to rotate this one prime molecule, for example, around like this to see if these are the same. And after this rotation, we end up with a structure that looks like this. Now, it's pretty clear at this point that this structure is identical to this one. They're literally perfectly superimposable as we have them drawn right here. But let's follow the logic here. We generated the mirror image by this reflection. We then identified that the mirror image is identical to the original. Therefore, the molecule or the compound, so to speak, is achiral. Compound 1 is achiral. In fact, the structures 1 and 1 prime are identical to each other. The reflection is identical to the original. All right, let's look at the se second example, bromocyclohexane. Well, here, again, we're going to reflect through the plane of the screen. This is going to exchange the positions of the upward-pointing bromine and this downward-pointing implied hydrogen so that in the mirror image, the hydrogen is now pointed up and the bromine pointed back. And again, the question is, is this structure, what we might call 1 prime, identical to the original structure, which we might call 1? Well, again, we're going to need to rotate the mirror image as much as we can, as much as we need to, to try to line things up. And again, what we need to do is kind of flip over the molecule so that that bromine pointed back 
flips to an upward pointing position. So we need to rotate around an axis like this, 180 degrees, and when we do that, we get this structure. And again, it's pretty clear here that this structure and this structure are identical, exactly superimposable. If I just translated this up here, these are the exact same structure. And so these being identical, again, if we follow the logic, we generated the mirror image via reflection, and then we demonstrated that the mirror image is identical to the original structure, making the original compound a chiral. And again, one and one prime are the exact same structure. Now in the last case, let's do that same type of reflection through the plane of the screen. Again, this is going to exchange the positions of the NH2 group and the hydrogen right here. So this is the mirror image after reflection through the plane of the screen. And the question here now is, is this identical to the structure of the original molecule? Well, if I try to do what we did in the previous two cases and turn over the molecule like this to swing the NH2 group to an upward pointing position so that the carbon and NH2 would line up, this would swing the benzene ring over here and this methyl group over here. And that is not the same as the structure we have right here. If I try to line up the NH2 and the implied hydrogen here, notice there's an implied hydrogen out here, the methyl and phenyl groups get messed up. And if I try to line up the methyl and phenyl groups, well, that's exactly what I have in this orientation. We can see very clearly that the NH2 groups and the implied hydrogen at this carbon are not lining up. So there's actually no way to perfectly superimpose these two structures. They are not the same. One thing to notice as well is that we have one carbon with four different groups attached to it. A tetrahedral carbon bearing a hydrogen, an NH2, a methyl, and a benzene ring. Four different groups, that's a stereocenter. And with one stereocenter like this, one tetrahedral stereocenter, we're looking at a chiral compound as a rule. But again, the brute force method here says generate the mirror image, compare it to the original. If they are not the same, you're looking at a chiral compound. And in fact, the mirror image and the original compound are related as enantiomers. There's a deep logical relation between chirality and enantiomerism in that the mirror image of a chiral compound is its enantiomer, just like the mirror image of your right hand is your left hand.